Elizabeth Warren rock star Pocahontas hit a home run, you heard? Ho, ho, ho. Medicare for all. She put out a plan, finally. Finally into a choir of, how you gonna pay for it? How you gonna pay for it? Hey, the, the, the talking heads on television, how you gonna pay for it? Medicare for all, 50, $52 trillion, how you gonna pay for it? 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 How many times have we heard how are you going to pay for it? Medicare for all. You can't do it. The country's too big. There's too many people. It's too expensive. Well, Elizabeth Warren, it's, it's already factually in the record how we're going to pay for it. And Elizabeth Warren did a fantastic job of releasing a 20-page document, which I'm going to go through the best of my ability and, and try to tell you exactly what's in this 20-page document because it is spectacular. And most importantly, it is Medicare for all. Elizabeth Warren has been accused of being sidestepping the issue of health care for all, health being some somewhat health care for some health care, but for somebody, right? You know, not for all. And uh, I read through the plan, and it's pretty it's pretty convincing what she means. It does mean covering all people. Medicare for all puts all health care spending on the government's books. It doesn't mean a medical, you know, uh, a, a uh, health care system run by the government. That's the, that's the falsehood. The fact is that the government is the single payer of all bills. That's how it works. And right now we pay 10 times the amount for everything, health care and pharmaceuticals and all that stuff. Uh, 10 times what other countries pay. And Medicare for all is the idea of of uh, reducing the costs. Does it work? Can it work? Will it work? Of course it'll work. Of course it'll work. So let's look at some of the commentary. Here's, uh, when give credit where credit is due. Here is uh, TYT with Mr. Potato Head, Hank Uger, are going to talk about it and give it a few minutes. And I here's where I agree with TYT completely. Elizabeth Warren has been facing a lot of questions over the past few weeks since the Democratic debate, uh, at the very least, about how she plans to pay for her Medicare for All plan and what exactly it will look like. And that is because Medicare for All is a benefit that you would get. And so you need to explain how it's paid for. If it's bombs, it's free. You don't have to talk about it. But if it's Medicare, we really need to know. And so now her, her plan is available, or at least a proposal about her plan. It's not the actual legislation, but she does have a post uh, that's like 20 pages long about a lot of the details in terms of the financing and everything. So there is a good amount of good here. There's also some bad. We're going to cover both. Um, first of all, in terms of uh, substantively, How much Medicare for All is it? Well, she says under my plan, Medicare for All will cover the full list of benefits outlined in the Medicare for All Act, including long-term care, audio, vision, and dental benefits. Okay, so that puts it to rest. The bill covers everything that's in the bill that Bernie Sanders wrote the damn bill, the Medicare for All bill. Everything is covered. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Long-term care, audio, visual, right? Vision, right? Fucking dental. Hey, you can go to the dentist, eye doctor, right? It's all covered, right? It's all covered, and it doesn't cost us anything more. It actually costs us less, as you're going to see. That obviously is, is intended to match the, the version that, that Bernie has put out that is substantive Medicare for all that actually not only gives you everything that Medicare currently provides, but actually would expand the coverage to things like, um, you know, like a, a vision, dental, those sorts of things. So uh, overall, it is, before we get into the financing and everything, uh, it is substantive health care. Yes, all right, first uh, thoughts on it. Um, and the most important, it's real Medicare for all. <laughs> like super worried that she was gonna listen to advisors going, oh, we gotta get closer to the Democratic Party and everybody thinks it's unrealistic. And let's do like Medicare for all, but for some and, and for others not so much. And uh, let's find some compromise on top of compromise. And I'm positive that she was at, had at least some voices counseling her in that direction. She didn't do that. This is actually Medicare for all. It ends private insurance, period. Ends private insurance, period. Thank you, Cenk Uger, man, that was good stuff. Right, that's what it's really all about because, uh, listen, two-thirds of adults say finances haven't improved since the election of Donald Trump, you heard? Uh, see, we need this. We need health care for all in this country, right? There's a million reasons why if you have, you know, like corporate health care insurance, you work for a corporation, you don't want to leave because you don't want to lose your health care. 
right? And you, you wanted to start a new business, but you won't because you're scared. You're scared you're going to lose your health care, right? You're going to go bankrupt, right? Because you can't afford everything, right? So economists uh, issued uh, issues have always, economic issues have always been an important factor for American elections. After all, people who feel prosperous typically want things to continue just as they are. And electing a new leader might feel rocking the boat, feel like rocking the boat. Uh, that's, that is essentially the truth. But how does how does 99% of the people doing less in this country believe that they're doing better and the economy has never been so good? Well, that's, you can blame the corporate media for that, the gaslighting of the American public to believe in a, in a very convincing charlatan at the head of the arrow was Donald Trump on TV shaking his finger saying, don't, everything is so good, you don't want communism, if fucking communism, right? You don't want commun- socialists, the commie little socialists, right? You don't want any of that shit, right? Uh, people fall, fall for that stuff. So just a statistic that two-thirds of adults, and there's a whole lot of bar charts and shit crap, right, that convince, that are proving that two-thirds of adults say finances haven't improved. But nonetheless... There's still the economy has never been so good. Here's one other statistic I want to look at before, and I've always said it that the stock market would get rocked if Bernie Sanders were elected, and now it looks like Elizabeth Warren as well because she's proposing this, you know, this plan because the the Medicare for all plan that she's proposing doesn't stop at financing Medicaid, Medicare, because she's saying, well, how do you pay for it? And she's going into the pockets of the of the billionaires, right? She's going into the um, new taxes on financial corporations, giant corporations, and the top 1%. She's also proposing a wealth tax. I think it's six cents on, on a dollar for every dollar that you have over a billion dollars. That only includes maybe you know a couple of hundred, maybe a couple of thousand people in the country. But it it amounts to billions and billions, it amounts to literally trillion dollars. I'll give you the, the breakdown completely because I'm paraphrasing. But it amounts to big money. Right? You're not going to pay more than more in taxes. And guess what? The billionaires and the trillionaires are not really going to feel anything anyway. They're not going to feel a difference in lifestyle because, because a guy that has $10 billion, now he has $8 billion. It's not going to matter to him. Or $7 billion. Well, how about $1 billion? Uh, it's not, his life is not going to change. His life is not affected, but your life is going to greatly improve with these measures. So the stock market historically predicts, uh, is according to this, is historically wrong, but I'm not going to look at that. I just want to look at the statistic, that the S&P 500 will plunge 25% if the Democrat becomes the president. Right? Uh, 20, the market would drop 25% if Warren or Bernie Sanders wins. Now, I don't know if it'll drop 20. I don't agree that if a corporate Democrat gets in, I don't think it'll drop at all. I think it'll, because they're not for Medicare for all. They're not for actual program. They're not for decreasing military spending at all. Uh, so I don't think those would drop. So let's, let's dive in. Uh, but that statistic right there that the markets will correct under a Bernie Sanders uh, or Elizabeth Warren now looking very, very strong. Wow, imagine the two together as president, vice president, unstoppable team, unstoppable. Right? Now, I want Bernie Sanders at the top of the ticket because he wrote the damn bill. <laughs> and he has a 40-year track record of keeping, uh, keeping with it. Now, Elizabeth Warren is a come lately and, uh, again, has a record of turn coding. But let's just talk about the policy that she's presenting. So... Um, so there's a lot to this. So, so just buckle down. So families are getting crushed by health costs. Just like, uh, just look at the numbers, $12,378. That's how much an average family of four with employer sponsored insurance personally pays per year on employee premium contributions and out of pocket costs in 2018. And that figure is increasing. 87 million people. Uh, 87 million adults, American adults in 2008 were uninsured or underinsured. Meaning, what does underinsured mean? Meaning, either they have no insurance or their so-called insurance is like a car without the with the engine missing. Right? 
it, it looks fine sitting in the lot, but inadequate if they actually want to use it. Uh, so much of that, man. Like, you know, yo, you got Medicare, you got, uh, yeah, dental plan. Then you try to find a dentist and you can't find one. Nobody takes your insurance. So what good is, is it? It's like the car without the, with the, without the engine. That's precisely what it is. A great analogy. Right. So, um, so nearly one in every two adults not currently on Medicare has no insurance or unreliable insurance. Now, it used to be a thing where municipalities like, like city workers had great insurance. And even that's changing, right? Even that, you get like, you know, I was a city worker and I fucking, you got the shittiest, shittiest coverage, right? You go, you, you can't get the glasses you need. You can't get, forget about trying to find a dentist, right? And then the most they'll do is pull a tooth. It's bad shit. It's bad stuff, right? We need Medicare for all. 37 million American adults don't fill a prescription didn't fill a prescription last year because of costs. 36 million people skipped the recommended test, treatment, or follow-up because of costs. 40 million people don't go to a doctor to check out a health problem because of costs. 57 million people had trouble covering their medical bills. Today in 2019, the United States of America, the wealthiest nation in the history of the world. I'm going to talk about the numbers, man. You're going to get your numbers. So relax, sit on your hands for a second and listen, listen. I know it's hard. I know it's, oh, socialism. Fucking God, he's a socialist. I can't believe what happened to this guy. He's a fucking socialist. (laughs) Just relax a second. Uh, As the world, inadequate health coverage is crushing the finances and ruining the lives of tens of millions of American families. I am running for president on a radical idea calling out what's broken and speaking plainly about how to fix it. Uh, So, the numbers. Let's go to the numbers. The numbers. I got to... How come I can't see what page I'm on? Page, page. Oh, there it is. So, page three. Page three, three, page three. Okay, so here's the... I want to read this. I want to read this. I don't know what I want to read. I want to read something. Listen to this. So, option one. Maintain our current system, which will cost the country $52 trillion over 10 years. And under the current system, 24 million people won't be covered. Millions can't get long-term care. 63 million have coverage gaps or substantial coverage that could break down if, if they actually got sick. And millions who have health insurance will end up going broke, at least in part from medical costs anyway. Sounds reasonable, right? That's what, that's about where we are right now. Together, the American people will pay eleven trillion of that bill themselves in the forms of premiums, deductibles, copays, out of pocket, out of network, and other expensive medical equipment that and care they pay for out of pocket, out of pocket. All this, I'll put the the link is down below. If you want to read the, these this very extensive uh, document yourself, you should definitely do that. Uh, all the while, America's wealthiest individuals and biggest companies pay far less in taxes than other major countries. Right? So that's that's currently the current state of things. We actually pay 10 times more than other countries. Right? 10 times. That's ridiculous. Right? Option two, right? Switch to the approach of Medicare for all, which would cost the country less than un- just under $52 trillion over 10 years. Uh, the, uh, the same or less. I think it'll actually be far less. But every American, every person in America, all 331 million people will have full health coverage and coverage for long-term care. Wow, we could do it for the same amount. Where are you going to get the money? Where are you going to get the money? How are you going to pay for it? 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 How many times? How many How many times? Fox News fucking talking ahead. How are you going to pay for it? <laughs> how are you going to pay for it? <laughs> how are you going to pay for it? Fucking sickening, man. It's sickening. They're working against you. Wake up. Everybody gets the doctor and treatment they need uh, when they need it. No more restrictive provider networks. No more insurance companies denying coverage for prescription treatments, for prescribed treatments. And no more going broke over medical bills. I'll take it. 
the 12, the 11 trillion in household insurance and out-of-pocket expenses projected under our current system goes right back into the pockets of Americans, American working people. And uh, we make up the difference with targeting uh, spending cuts, new taxes on giant corporations, and the richest 1% of Americans, and by cracking down on tax evasion. Not one penny in middle-class tax increases, okay? So, so the, the symphony of people that are going to say, they're going to raise your taxes, your taxes are going to go up, your taxes are going to go up, absolutely, there's no other way of doing it, your tax the tax that you pay, Mr. Poor Guy, they're going to just charge you more for tax because how else are you going to pay for it? How are you going to pay for it? Oh, we just told you how you're going to pay for it. Right? We just told you how the pay, how we're going to pay for it. But we're going to tell you more, too, because it really is a fascinating subject. I just need to, for some reason, my page, oh, there it is. My page, my page number. So I want to read from, uh, I want to read the, the financial breakdown, her financial breakdown. It's brilliant, man. It's brilliant, man. This is the this is where our country should be going, right? So, here's some of the financial points. So, where does the rest of the money come from? From that allows us to eliminate premiums, deductibles, copays, and spending for every American. Here's the four sources of income. One, better enforcement of our, our existing tax laws, so we stop letting people evade their tax obligations. Not you, not me. The corporations that don't pay any tax, that pay zero, and they don't pay anything on monies made abroad. So you, you bring the foreign tax back up to 35%. You, you take the corporate tax that got slashed under Trump down to 20%, bring it back up to 35%, that sort of thing. Better enforcement of our existing tax laws so we stop letting people evade their tax obligations. I just read that. Number two. Uh, target taxes on financial sector, for large corporations in the top 1%. Three, uh, her approach on immigration. I don't know. She claims that if you enforce immigration law, you actually increase, uh, you decrease the amounts of, of money spent on health care or you increase the pool of money of taxpayers in the pool that brings the cost down. I don't know anything about that. Uh, but shutting down a slush fund for defense spending. Okay, so here, number one, cracking down on tax evasion and fraud. The total government, the federal government has a nearly 15% tax gap between what it collects in taxes uh, and what is actually owed because of systematic under-enforcement of our tax laws, tax evasion and fraud. Uh, right there, you could save $2.3 trillion without a single new tax. Uh, just by just by just by enforcing the current tax laws, right? So there's a lot to this. Uh, target taxes on the financial sector, large corporations, and top one percent. We can generate a whole lot of uh, a lot of the remaining revenue we need for Medicare for all just by eliminating bad incentives in our current tax system and asking those asking those who I said ask <laughs> asking those who have done really well in the past few years to pay their fair share. Now, there's also something in here about a uh, wealth tax. And that's essentially if you make, if you're over, if you have over a billion dollars, if you're a billionaire, right, you would pay six cents on every dollar that you have over the billion dollars, right? And that adds up to a lot of money, right? It's insignificant. It's also a... Um, a tax on uh, Wall Street speculation, every in, every uh, in, and every out of every transaction would have a fraction of one tenth of one percent, which add up, which adds up to about a trillion dollars a year, about eight hundred thousand. One tenth of one percent on the sale of bonds, stocks, and derivatives. That's another way to do it, right? Wall Street hates this bill. Of course, they hate it. Of course, why is why is corporate America going to come down on this bill, right? Because you see that it, it, reaches, it reaches into their pocket. That's why. Because whenever they say, how are you going to pay for it? They look at the American people and say, well, the American people are already strapped. They can't pay for it, right? They can't. So you're going to pay for it, corporate America, right? By cutting out the uh, lowering CEO and executive compensations, um, right? 
uh, redirect tax, uh, taxpayer-funded health spending. We already have tax, taxpayer-funded health spending. I didn't know that. $6 trillion in existing state and local government insurance spending. Point that at Medicare for All. Right? Instead of giving it to the insurance companies that rape the country, right? Instead of giving them the money, right? We're eliminating the insurance companies. Why is that so hard to understand? Why is it why is that such a difficult idea to understand? It's like you're the person in need of health, and there's the doctor over there in the hospital, sitting in the hospital, right? And there's this this big bunch of thugs right in between you and the hospital like the mob negotiating how much how much it's going to cost you to get in that hospital and how much the hospital is going to get from the insurance company that they're raping next door, right? They're raping your insurance company. It makes no sense, right? So get rid of these people. It's a half a million, a million people in the country. Sorry, get find another job. Uh, it's not a big deal. Just find another fucking job. You know, $15 minimum wage, go work at Starbucks, man. We need you. Right. Get, 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 get going. Get, 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 get. That's why I'm proposing an institutional country by country minimum tax on foreign, foreign earnings tax. Right. How is it that a, a corporation like Amazon or uh, Apple, for example, can do business in, I don't know, in Europe and have a, uh, a, a, an address in Europe and, and just put all the profits into the European company? that they own, the, Euro- the European part of their ownership, and pay no U.S. tax on that money. They're stealing from us, right? And then they, they, uh, they enjoy all of the benefits of a U.S. corporation. It's fucking st- stealing. How do we let this happen? Right? This is the problem. How are you going to pay for Medicare for all? Well, this is the problem, right? You have to go after big business. You have to go after the, uh, the 1%. Right? So... It's an outstanding bill. I think you should read it for yourself. Um, Here's the wealth tax. By asking billionaires to pitch in six cents on each dollar of net worth above a billion dollars, we can raise an additional one trillion in revenue and further close the gap between what middle class families pay as a percentage of their wealth and what the top one tenth of one percent pay. Uh, So wealth tax, rain and defense spending, she says. there's all kinds of ways to do that. This is brilliant, man. This is what we needed. Achieving Medicare for all. Okay, so Marcus Conte reporting. Wow, what a, what a day. What a, what a day. What a great thing Elizabeth Warren has done. Can she win? Can she beat Trump? Pocahontas. Pocahontas, she lied about her heritage. Is that a, is that a game changer? Is that a break? Who gives a fucking shit, man? Trump lies every day. Right? Hillary Clinton fucking... Path- pathological liars. They're all liars. They're all liars. Whether whether Bernie Sanders believed Russiagate or not, if he did believe it, then so be it. But if he didn't believe it and he's just making it up, then he's a liar too. They're all, to some degree, liars. So I don't care. What do I care? All I care about is policy. And Elizabeth Warren, on this day, at this moment in our American history, Elizabeth Warren has the policy for the American people. Stop fighting against a healthcare system that benefits you. Stop protecting the 1%. Stop protecting the oligarchy. Damn it. Because that's what you're doing. When you champion Trump, when you come on here now, and I know the comment's going to be, socialist, he's a socialist. No, 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 socialism, it always leads to, to terror. It always leads to countries eating their dogs. It's horrible. It's pathetic. You can't have it. <clears throat> Forget about the terminology. Forget about the the code words, the, the push button, the trigger terms, right? because that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is a broken healthcare system. Right? We're also talking about a broken military industrial complex military system where you know war is profitable. So healthcare or disease is profitable in our country. We have to change that. Put money into prevention and you lower the, you lower the, the cost even more. Right? Instead of spending all this money on giving all the money to insurance companies, let's build uh, let's build fitness centers across the country. Right? Obesity treatment, right? drug treatment, uh, just just um, meditation, right? you know, awareness, right? Awareness of your health, 
I have, most people don't even know. I mean, I just I just came back from the uh, from the farmers market. Right? Every every Saturday in Brooklyn, there's a farmers market right around the corner, and you know the groceries are. I buy maybe twenty five dollars a week in in fresh greens, you know, um, whatever today tomatoes, right? It's garden garden stuff, right? It's all fresh, right, from the Catskills. Right and, and Jersey Shore, right? But uh, big heads of broccoli and cauliflower, right? right? For twenty five dollars, I'm I, you know, that's that's vegetables for a week, right? And people spend that on, you know, I guess two packs of cigarettes in New York. I mean, what's what's wrong with people, right? See, we need to educate people, right? Rather than buying, you know, soda and fucking beer and cigarettes, why don't you buy some vegetables? Why don't you learn about your diet? Learn about your exercise. Uh, get out into the air. Learn how beneficial medi- uh, meditation can be. Don't take drugs. Don't don't be a, you know don't be a drug head. Don't rely on caffeine and nicotine and and um, all these toxins to stimulate your thought process and lose weight. Be just be be athletic. Be one. Be one with your 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 uh, environment, and thereby you also decrease the cost of Medicare for all. But Insurance companies don't have any profit. There's no profit motive. There's nothing profitable about keeping people healthy. There's profit in keeping people sick and drug dependent. And that's what we have to change in this country. So thank you, Elizabeth Warren. Um, I don't know. I'm starting to, I'm starting to feel good about it in the, you know, now. And uh, I'll do another piece on Beto O'Rourke dropping out. I, I'm aware of it. Beto O'Rourke has um, officially dropped out. But uh, I don't want to cloud the uh cloud up this thread with uh shit sandwich beta will rock it was a shit sandwich from the start and still a shit sandwich so uh marcus conte reporting